Hello and welcome to the episode 119 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we have some early concerts, a couple of fruitful recording sessions, and a trip to the 14-hour Technicolor Dream. Let's begin with the usual performance at the Top 10 Club. 29th of April 1961, the Beatles, with beat bass on drums, were still busy with their second residency in Hamburg, West Germany. Third Hamburg residency going strong for the same lineup in 1962, this time at the Star Club. Let's move on two years and, on the 29th of April 1964, we find the Beatles, now with Ringo Starr on drums, performing live at the ABC Cinema in Edinburgh for the first of two consecutive nights in Scotland. Before the gig, they were interviewed for the BBC Scotland Radio by Bill Aitkenhead. The interview was then aired on the Scottish News between 6.10 and 6.32 pm. Fun fact! Before leaving for Scotland, in the morning, the band had been photographed at Madame Tussauds with their wax statues, which had been unveiled on the 28th of March 1964, as detailed in episode 89 of What A Fab Day. And before moving any further, it is my duty to remind you to please visit www.simonmas.com support if you like the work I'm doing with this podcast. On that page of my website, you'll find some ideas on how you can be fab and show me your support. One of the things you can do is sending me a comment. What do you like about the podcast? What would you do differently? Let me know and I'll try to accentuate what I already do well and improve what's missing. Thank you! On the 29th of April 1965, the Beatles were again busy at the Twickenham Film Studios for the filming of their second feature film, Help, this time for a reshoot of the nightclub bathroom scene. The reshooting has the hand dryer sucking air rather than blowing it. When this scene was completed, Ringo was filmed restrained on a table underneath the band studio, facing a chainsaw. During the filming of this scene, the Beatles received the visit of DJ Chris Denning, host of the Radio Luxembourg series The Beatles. Denning interviewed them twice. First, he talked with John, Paul and George. Then, after the chainsaw sequence had been completed, he chatted alone with Ringo. The Fabs didn't seem too happy or involved during the interviews, though. Perhaps they had enough of answering the same questions over and over again, or perhaps they were tired of the day spent working, or perhaps both. In 1966, the Beatles were instead busy at the EMI Studios in Abbey Road. Between 5 pm and 1 am, the band worked on Eleanor Rigby, recording the main vocal track by Paul and the chorus harmonies sung by John, George and Paul. After that, the Fab Four tried a remake of the basic track of I'm Only Sleeping, taping five attempts after several rehearsals, one of which was included, along with one of the proper remakes, in the Anthology 2 album in 1996. All in all, though, the band considered Take 11 from the 27th of April superior to any work completed tonight. It was to that take, then, that John added his lead vocal track, with the tape running slower, so that it would sound higher pitched during normal playback. One year later, in 1967, John Lennon and his friend John Dunbar took part to the 14-hour Technicolor Dream, a benefit event for the underground newspaper International Time at the Alexandra Palace in London. It was a happening featuring poetry, art and live music. Pink Floyd famously performed during the night, but Soft Machine, Arthur Brown and other acts also had a slot. Japanese artist Yoko Ono was one of the features of the event, too, although Lennon didn't meet her on the occasion. BBC sent a troupe filming parts of the event 
for a TV special called Man Alive, What Is a Happening, to be aired on BBC2 on the 17th of May between 8.05 and 8.35 pm. The special covered the same grounds as the Granada television special It's So Far Out, It's Straight Down, to which Paul McCartney had taken part on the 18th of January 1967, as detailed in episode 18 of What A Fab Day. Finally, on the 29th of April 1969, operating in Abbey Road between 2.30 and 6.30 pm, George Martin's protégé Chris Thomas had a listen to all the recently recorded songs by the Beatles. It is unclear whether or not the band was present, but they surely showed up for the 7.30 pm to 1 am session, during which Ringo overdubbed his lead vocals on the rhythm track of Octopus's Garden, and Paul added a piano part during the bridges of the song. The session, produced by Chris Thomas like the one for the recording of the basic track, was wrapped up with four stereo mixes of the work. This concludes this episode of What A Fab Day. Tomorrow, we have the return of what is, perhaps, the oddest piece in the Beatles catalogue. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.